right, so AMD just released a new entry into the affordable gaming CPU market. It's the 7500F. It wasn't released in the US, but it's easy to get one through AliExpress. That's where I got mine. I have a link for it below if you're interested. It's a six core, 12 thread, 65 watt TDP CPU that runs at a base 3.7 gigahertz and boosts up to five gigahertz. It is designed for the AM5 socket, so it uses DDR5 RAM. I'm using a high-end motherboard and RAM to see what the capabilities of the CPU are. I've got it in my Gigabyte Aorus Extreme X670E, and I have 7200 CL34 rated SK Hynix A dies running at 8,000 megatransfers per second. F-clock is at 2,000 megahertz. And the U-Clock is running at 1 to 2 at 2,000 MHz. The 5800X3D is an 8-core, 16-thread, 105-watt TDP CPU. It runs at a base frequency of 3.4 GHz and has a 4.5 GHz boost clock. It is designed for the AM4 socket and runs on DDR4 RAM. I have it in my Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master Revision 1 here. And I have 32 gigabytes of Samsung BDI RAM rated at 4000 CL14. I'm running them at 3800 CL14 here at a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio of F clock to M clock to U clock. So that means they're all running at a frequency of 1900 megahertz. The memory data rate is at 3800 megatransfers per second. So the way that the 5800X3D achieved its gaming dominance is by increasing the size of its L3 cache to three times that of the regular 5800X. So it went from 32 to 96 megabytes. To explain the relationship between RAM, L3 cache, L2 cache, L1 cache, and the CPU as easily as I can, basically RAM or random access memory is like the short-term memory of your computer. It stores data that the CPU or the central processing unit needs to access quickly for running programs, okay? L3, L2, and L1 caches are like progressively smaller and faster memory layers that the CPU uses to temporarily store and retrieve frequently accessed data. With L1 being the fastest but smallest, helping the CPU perform tasks more efficiently. L3 is a shared pool between L1 and L2, and it sits above RAM but below L2 in the hierarchy of CPU to memory. Now what they've done with the 7500F is actually increase the L2 cache. So instead of 512 kilobytes per core, it's now at one megabyte per core. So with Tarkov usually not using more than six cores, along with the clock improvements and the increased L2 cache size, it'll be interesting to see how these two chips match up. So I hope you'll join me in this episode. Here we go. So Tarkov is a tough game to compare hardware with because there are so many variables and so much RNG involved on so many levels. So even if you were to run the same system on the same map two times, you may get different results based on the server you get put into, the amount of AI that are put in, the loot that's put in, the amount of players, and even the weather. So there are so many variables involved that it's hard to really get a one-to-one -one direct comparison of CPUs specifically. So for this test, I had a buddy come over, I set up both systems and we both loaded into the same online raid. And that's the reason why I have two different GPUs here. I've done a comparison in the past between the 4070 and the 3080. They're very similar in terms of performance. And in my opinion, this setup should make it clear the differences between the two CPUs here and how they stack up. All right, so the TLDR is that between these two chips, the 5800X3D performs about 30% better than the 7500F on Streets of Tarkov in patch 
The 7500F with the 3080 averaged about 82 FPS, while the 5800X3D was averaging about 111. That was close to the max reached by the 7500F at 113, and the 5800X3D maxed out at 149 FPS. So for the 1% numbers, I feel like the averages are not the right number to look at to really compare how they felt in terms of smoothness, which is usually what the FPS 1% is used for. And I say that because whenever I go into the inventory or I use a scoped optic and I zoom in, then the FPS 1% tanks and it brings along the average with it. So the time that you spend in your inventory and scoped in can vary from raid to raid and it's going to skew the FPS 1% based on how much time is spent doing that. So. For now, I'm using these numbers, but I'm going to come up with a better way to represent the 1% difference. Maybe I'll just do a closed section where I don't go into inventory or scope in, and then we can see a real comparison. Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to do that for my next video. For now, I've got everything almost wrapped up on this one, and I just came up with this idea. But if you guys have any other ideas for the 1% to be represented properly, let me know. You can see here at the start of the raid, the FPS is a bit higher than the end average. And that's pretty common for Tarkov. Usually you're going to see the highest FPS right when you load in. You'll probably see a frame time spike occur for a few seconds. That's when the AI and maybe other players load in. And then you'll kind of see it stabilize a little lower than what you came in at usually. So for streets specifically on the outskirts of town, the FPS is going to be better, as you can see here, around 90s on the 7500F and then between 120, even up to 140 on the 5800X3D. However, as we move in closer to the center of the map and there are more AI and more assets within the drawing range of each system, you can see the FPS drop pretty proportionally on each side and around 70s for the 7500F and close to 100 sometimes above on the 5800X3D. And as I skip forward to our visit to Nikita's cafe for some food and drink, you can see that the FPS has gone back up and we're averaging between 70 and 80 on the 7500F and somewhere between 110, 125 on the 5800X3D. And as we get to the Klimov Street exfil, you can see that the FPS has gone back up since we're towards the edge of the map again, around 100 on the 7500F and 120-ish on the 5800X3D. So as you can see by the numbers, about 80 and 110 averages between the two CPUs, but it really varies depending on what part of the map you're in and how far into the raid you are. So hopefully those explanations gave you a more complete picture of the performance. So on the heavily CPU bound map Streets of Tarkov, the 5800X3D had about an advantage of 30% and sometimes more. When we take these systems to woods, that gap closes a little bit and it becomes about a 10% lead for the 5800X3D. And at least in this test, the 7500F actually reached a higher max, which doesn't really make a difference because it's usually like looking in the sky or away from the concentrated assets on the map. But still, it's something to note because on streets, it was the other way around, obviously. On the 1%, there was a pretty large difference in this test. 24 FPS to be exact. So if you look at the 7500F numbers, they actually exceed the 5800X3D's numbers at the beginning of the raid before all the AI are loaded in. So pay attention to the FPS number and the frame time number. There it is right there. And after that's completed, the 5800X3D's frame rate didn't drop that much, but the 7500F's 
has dropped significantly. So I think without a heavy AI presence, the clock speed helps the 7500F reach some pretty high frame rates. Once some weight is put on the CPU with more AI, it looks like the extra bandwidth of the 96 megabyte L3 cache on the 5800X3D far exceeds the 32 megabytes L3 and one megabyte per core L2 cache on the 7500F. Still, this is great performance and it's, and it's coming in at pretty much what you can find the 5600X for, but offering performance between the 5600X and 5800X3D. Given that they're generally around the same price to set up after all is said and done with motherboard and RAM, I think that's a pretty sweet deal from AMD. So while the 5800X3D is, in my book, the best value CPU while also being in the elite ballpark for gaming performance, the 7500F really packs a punch because it costs half as much as the 5800X3D, which is already a good value. So you're getting at worst maybe 70% of the performance for 50% of the cost. And at best, like I'm showing here on Woods, you might even get 90% of the same performance. I think that's a amazing deal for someone trying to keep the cost down as much as possible. Not only that, it draws less power, requires less cooling even, and in the end that's also going to save you some money. So those are my thoughts and findings after completing this test. I hope the information I presented was helpful or informative in some way. My takeaway is that the 7500F pound for pound may be a better value than the 5800X3D. So for those looking for a really cost effective build, it's a really good option that keeps the total cost down as much as possible while still giving you great performance. I think that a lot of people are looking for 120 to 140 FPS averages on all maps. And for those in that boat, for 1080 and 1440 players, I think the 5800X3D is capable of doing that for the most part and is the best option. All right, that's gonna do it for me guys. As always, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or hit me up on Discord. The link is in the video description and I will see you in the next one.